on the call know that we are recording this meeting. Laura will um, process it afterwards and she sends it out to folks. Uh, I think it might be put on the website, but um, we just want to let you know that we are recording the meeting. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us to talk about the basswood and Old Santa Fe traffic signal. It's 605, so we will go ahead and get started. And this meeting will be recorded. So this is the pre-construction community meeting for the traffic signal and pedestrian improvements at Basswood Boulevard in Old Santa Fe Trail, which is in council districts two and seven. Before we get started, are there any representatives from these council districts that would like to give a few words? Hello, I am Myra Camacho. And district director to the office of council member Carlos Flores, district two. Hello, all. I just wanted to give a quick message. Uh, Councilman Flores apologizes uh, for not being able to attend today's virtual meeting. He's paying his respects, attending a wake at, a mo at the moment. Um, he wants to thank staff for working with him and making this traffic signal a possibility, and also the community for their involvement and continued participation. And um, we were happy we keep working with everybody here and continuing to improve the safety of the community. So thank you. Thank you. So my name is Fanta Kaba and the design engineers is LJA Engineering, who is also on the call. So our agenda for tonight, we'll go over the project background, the project update, the project schedule, and also project contact information. Just a little on the background. So this project is funded by the 2022 bond and the objectives include improving the traffic flow during peak hours, reducing delay and overall safety for all users pedestrian safety improvements at the intersection, including the pedestrian actuated signals with push buttons, as well as ADA compliant curb ramps. The project location, we are in North Fort Worth. This is west of I-35. And we had a design phase public meeting back in March. We had a really great turnout and a few concerns that were brought up. We just want to give an update. So one of the things that came up was why is a traffic signal needed at this location? And the volumes on Basswood Boulevard, they're, they're so high. And so it's hard for the site street traffic on Old Santa Fe to get gaps to access Basswood Boulevard. Um, there was concerns regarding the backups backup from signal west to roundabout at horseman road. And so with this signal, some queuing is anticipated. However, we're, we're not expecting it to extend all the way to the roundabout, which is 
1,900 feet to the west. Other concerns from that meeting were drainage issues just east of the intersection. And so the city has conducted preliminary review of the drainage issues. So we've reached out to a consultant, we've received that study. And so we're looking at options to address the drainage concerns and we'll, we'll see whether or not that can be included into this project or a future project because the scope of this project is for that traffic signal. However, we are looking at our options to address the drainage issues. There was concerns about backup at I-35 and the city will coordinate the new signal with the existing traffic signal at I-35. And also the city has submitted a, re a request to TxDOT for dual eastbound left turn lanes at I-35 and Basswood. In regards to the truck traffic on Basswood, currently there are no truck restrictions on Basswood east of Old Santa Fe. However, there's a no truck right turn sign at west of the intersection and the city is reviewing options for truck traffic. And then the last is the U-turn traffic. The existing U-turn restrictions will remain and city will look to conduct additional enforcement operations at this intersection. So now for the current design, we are planning on implementing left turn exclusive lanes for each direction and then we'll have crosswalks in our four directions as well as ADA ramps and pedestrian signals. Update on the project schedule. So the planned construction start is September 2023 with an estimated duration of eight months with no right of way required. And in regards to utilities, we are in coordination with Encore. The estimated construction cost is about $900,000. Conditions to expect during construction, overnight closure for all medians requiring concrete work, various daily lane closures, shoulder closures for north and southbound traffic, and no detour routes needed. Project contact information. We have our design engineer with LJA Engineering, Scott Poop. His number is 469-621-0710. Myself, Fanta Kaba, I'm the city project manager. My number is 817-392-8022. Then we have our construction contractor, Cody Turner. His number is 817-561-7400. For our service request, we have a few options. So we city, we, we love getting your feedback. Um, an example is the drainage issue that was brought up in our previous meeting. So other options to, to bring to our attention concerns are we have the My Fort Worth app for Apple, My Fort Worth app for Google. Both links are on this slide. You can also text hello to 817-835-MY-FORT-WORTH or 6939. And then you can also call the city call center 817-392-1234. Okay. And there's also the chat box on the city of Fort Worth website. Fanta, now, I, mm -hmm. Fanta yes, I don't think I don't think I have the ability to mute folks on the team. Laura probably did that. I'm not sure if you can or not. I know she assigned you some um, privileges, but it seems like we're getting some feedback from maybe a couple of our participants. Okay, let me. I will have to stop stop sharing really quick to do that. Oh. I'm going to open it up for questions while I try to mute. Okay.
Okay, so I believe I was able to mute everyone. So if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and ask. Um, you can also enter questions into the chat. I'm looking at the chat. I'm not sure if Fanta can see it. Right now we have a, a couple um, um, chats from Rusty Fuller asking us to please send him a copy of the presentation and he's included his email address. So we can definitely do that. Fanta, right now, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I hope I didn't mess up by muting everyone and now they're not able to ask questions, but I was just trying to um, uh, help get rid of that background noise. So um, Rusty Fuller is asking why this is taking 18 months to build. I mean, excuse me, eight months to build. Do you want to try to address that, Fanta? And there's a couple other questions in here too. So the first question is, why is this taking eight eight months? Yes. Yeah, so we are experiencing some delays in material procurement. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and ordered some long lead items, things like the poles and mass arms that are taking really long times to be delivered. And that's in the hopes of limiting the construction duration however we are we're, we're trying to get this signal built as soon as possible for you all. okay um that's right material acquisition is a problem and we've really worked hard to start that process early actually for this project and all of our traffic signal projects that are happening right now. We have a question from DNK. It says, hi Fanta, how will the construction limit Santa Fe Enclave's ability to get out during the eight months of construction? Are you familiar with where that is Fanta? Yeah, Cody, if you're still on the call, do you wanna take that question? Uh, I can't. I'm actually <clears throat> pulling up the drawings here. Um, so, uh, Chad, could you repeat that one more time? Yeah. So the question is, how will the how will the construction how will the construction limit Santa Fe enclaves? Uh oh. Question moved up. How will the construction limit Santa Fe Enclave's ability to get out during the eight months of construction? Okay, I guess, so, I guess I'm not I'm not certain on Santa Fe Enclave what that is. You just talking about on Santa Fe Drive? That's the the community south of the intersection. Okay, south of the yeah. intersection. Okay. Um, so pretty much we're, uh, we're just going to be do, doing daily lane closures. Um, so if anything, we'll be restricting, um, you know, a right turn, uh, or a left turn, but what there's two lanes there, there's two lanes there now. So you would be able to turn right or left coming out of there and it's just a daily lane closure. So it'll be opened up, you know, on non working hours. Um, so we'll try to, you know, limit the, uh, the lane closures as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, we do need to protect our uh, employees while they're out there, you know, installing this work. There will always be access. Okay, that's perfect. The next question is. Do you expect any days where there will be major disruption to the normal traffic flow during the construction process? So I kind of think you just covered yeah. it, right? Yeah, just, yeah, it's pretty much going to be daily lane closures. And the only other time that, you know, that it'll be, could be a little uh, congested is when we go to stand the signal poles, because at that point I'll be, when we're, uh, 
we're standing in the signal pole. I have to stop traffic completely um, while we're erecting the signal pole and getting it secure and safe to allow cars to travel underneath it. Um, that's very minimal, um, and we'll do that uh, pretty quickly. So, you know, it's pretty much going to be daily lane closures throughout the duration of the project. Okay. And then um, Sean is asking, could you please review the anticipated start date? He he missed that slide. So the um, can you tell us again, Fanto, when we're expected to start construction? Yes, construction is anticipated to start in September with a duration of eight months. And I can actually go back to that slide. I think you may have accident. Oh, sorry. And then our next question is, thanks for showing that slide Fanta. Our next question is, will the workers be allowed water breaks? Absolutely. Did that, did that answer come from Cody? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, uh, the, okay. que yeah, the question was, were, are my workers going to be allowed water yes. break? Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, so um, Cody is our contractor for the traffic signals, and you just heard it from straight from him. Yeah, we, we always, especially when it's hot outside, we'll always have a, a canopy or something of that nature for, for them to pull out of and get underneath and get some shade and uh, get some drinks, get some electrolytes in them. You know, safety is our number one um, thing here. Okay. We have another question from Sean. It says, um, also quickly, he says, I'm an engineer, so I understand the term daily lane closures, but the rest of the audience may not. So can we please um, clarify that and talk a little bit more about the traffic control? Yeah, so pretty much on that. So so say we're taking, I don't know if y'all familiar, if y'all can, if you can pull up the plan or not. Um, so pretty much we'll be uh, setting out barricades, uh, restricting vehicles, uh, say travel uh, eastbound on uh, Santa Fe. And it will just have a long taper with cones, you know, saying right lane closed um, with arrow boards shifting traffic over. Um, and that is will be between the hours of most likely nine to four. Um, and we do that, that way we can locate utilities for, you know, boards crossing the street so we don't hit anything um, and things of that nature. And so once we get done there uh, with that, then we'll, you know, move on to a different section. So uh, daily lane closure won't last more than eight hours typically. And traffic will still be able to move through that area because there's multiple lanes. So our intent is never to completely shut down the road and also not to require any detours. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. The only, the only place where we'll have some, some barricades up, you know, overnight, um, will be when we go to cut back those median noses, um, because we have to barricade those off, um, you know, sufficiently so, you know, vehicles don't drive off in there because we have to have time to remove the concrete um, and then place the pavement back and then, um, you know, to get those, get those medians uh, drawn back. Okay, perfect. Um, I don't see any other quit. Oh, wait. Our next question is from Monica. She says, do you know what type of signal light will be going up? Will there be arrow signals to turn left or right? Uh, yes, I can answer that. Let's see here and what we got. Yes, there will be, there will be arrows for your left turn. Um, You'll have. Uh, 
um, Fanta, can you show us that um, slide that shows the intersection improvements while we're talking about it? Sure. Yeah, Thank I'm going to say here on T, I'm going to say signal head four. And they will be flashing yellow arrows. Let me go to the... Um... So we have left, left turn lanes and exclusive left turn lanes in all direction and the side street will the main street will have flashing yellow arrow. That's correct. Or they'll be protected. Monica also asks another question. Okay, and the same rule applies no U turn allowed? Mm. Yes, yeah, so we had that on one of the previous slides. So the existing YouTube restrictions will remain. Are those those are just are those just signs on the arms that say no U-turn? I think they're are they located in the medians? They're, they probably are now. Yes, yeah, so the uh, those signs will be located on the mast arms. Okay, and Monica has a concern. She says, honestly, people ignore the signs. I, um, uh, Shweta, I know you mentioned on one of your slides that we were um, working with the city to provide more monitoring out there. I thought I saw something about that. Yes, yeah, so we we're going to have to look into additional enforcement options for this intersection because with, with, with the signs, we do understand that compliance is not 100%. So, yes, we are we are looking into those options. Chad, this is Rusty Fuller. I wanted to say, well, we've got all of the folks online here, uh, how much we appreciate this city having listened to the input from the uh, from the uh, design meeting, and uh, uh, so and taking those into consideration and answering them, and even trying to find solutions. So, thank you very much. It it uh, it shows that uh, participation in these things works both ways. Thank you. Um, we appreciate you saying that. I was going to say the thing, same thing to Fanta. Fanta, I really appreciate you putting those on these slides and addressing them the way you did. You did a great job. Thank you. That's a team effort. We really enjoy this community outreach and inputting all your feedback into all of our projects. Okay, there's a couple other things in the chat. Um, first, Monica says um, she's very grateful that this is finally happening. So that's great. We love to hear that. And then Tim says, is, he's asking this question, how will the traffic lights be timed for the green, red, et cetera? Um, excuse me. Yeah, so the, the traffic lights, that we'll have a video detection here. Um, so it'll be running off of that. Um, and I'm sure there's timing in the plans for how the signal will run. So that will all be the city of Fort Worth traffic engineers will, they'll tweak and tune that um, depending on the traffic flow, they'll watch it and see and then make necessary adjustments. But everything will be running, uh, be based off of the video detection. Um, so say you have somebody, you know, sitting there uh, coming out of one of the, the side streets or say you don't have anybody then you'll never you know the main drag will never get a they'll never get a red you know they'll continue to flow until a vehicle pulls up into that zone and then it'll send a call to the controller and say hey we got somebody here we need a 
we need to start timing it down to let these guys out. Thank you, Cody, for that. And also just to add on to that, so because the proximity to the signal at I-35 and Basswood, so the signal will be coordinated with that as well. Mm -hmm. Just so that you're not, you know, you're making it through one signal only to have a red at the next signal. So all of that is going to be taken into consideration along with the detection that Cody was mentioning. Okay, and we have another um, question in the chat from Carla. She says, when you said flashing yellow turn indicator, are you meaning the flashing yellow will come after a dedicated green arrow? Correct. says very good thank you um thank you carla Cody, this is Rusty Fuller again. I would be remiss in not saying thank you for attending this meeting. It, yes, uh, sir. We, we truly appreciate the involvement and the and the community support we get from uh, from the builders and the and the construction folks and, and your professionalism. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. And I'm I'm trying to copy all these great questions so that we have records of it. And I just noticed I missed something earlier from Monica. She was asking us about the no U-turn signs. And she she said that, you know, she was asking those questions because she was involved in an accident there or, or somewhere else due to that same very sort of condition of, um, you know, folks making U-turns when they shouldn't. So I forgot to read that earlier. I apologize, Monica. I just now saw that. Well, uh, can Chad, this is this is Rusty again. Um, I've noticed that on rare occasion, um, the city has used <clears throat> LED lights to outline stop signs. And I was wondering if it would be possible to consider outlining the no U-turn sign with such a uh, uh, device so that it it draws people's attention to it. Did you look into that? Um, Cigar, Fanta, you may um, yeah. you may have information about that, but also Cigar is on the call. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, the, the city sometimes does install um, the LEDs uh, on the outline of uh, uh, stop signs, um, but they're typically done at on post mounted signals. Um, and uh, and these uh, you know you can would be mounted on the on the traffic signal mast arm um, on on the top. So uh, that is not typical uh, um, to have those. Um, um, but but uh, uh, like Fanta said earlier, uh, we would do enforcement, you know, to prevent uh, the no U turns. Does that answer your question, sir? I mean, it's it's not uh, done. Yes, sir, it does. Um, let me just let me just say, my experience over the past ten years up here, uh, since we've gotten the North Division, is yes, traffic enforcement uh, uh, for traffic violations is about as frequent as um, oh, you know, snowstorms in the Sahara. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't we don't get the attention we need for law enforcement. So <clears throat> I was wondering if y'all could go back and take a look at how you could make the U-turn signs, no U-turn signs 
more prominent and um, hopefully get the attention. Okay. So people who defy them will defy them anyway. I don't. You could yes. definitely look into that. Take a look at it. it yes. Yes. Thanks. Yes. I, I, I didn't mention earlier, sorry about that, but we are looking also into looking at if we can modify the left turn lane so that that U turn, it's not feasible. So that's also one of the other options that we're looking into. Um, Monica supports that. She typed that into the chat. Okay, right now I don't see any other questions in the chat, Fanta. Oh, wait, Thank you. it says, uh, Monica says it. Yes. Anything to discourage those U-turns she supports. <laughs> yes, we understand that's a concern and we're doing, we're doing it as best as we can to find, find a solution for this. And then finally, Monica says that she lives in Santa Fe Enclave, just south of the intersection. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, thank you all for joining. And again, we we really appreciate the feedback that we received from the community. And uh, these are the options to input any requests. So we have the My Forward app for Apple, My Forward app for Google, and then we have the texting hello to 817-835 My Fort Worth. And also you can call the City Call Center at 817-392-1234. Thank you, Fana. Um, you did really great. You're really good at this. I appreciate you doing these meetings. Um, and then we we have um, just some additional things in the chat, just saying um, they they really are looking forward to the traffic signal. And thank you for this meeting. So we appreciate everybody attending and participating. And thank you, Fanta. Sure. And thank team. you, everyone. All right. Have a good night.